everyone. Welcome back to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect. My name is Chelsea McKinney, your host, as we explore various conservation careers, new species, and different types of technology that conservation professionals use to observe wildlife. Today we're coming to you from rural Maryland in a bog area where we're hoping to find some secretive bog turtles. I'm here with Christine Peterson from the University of Vermont who's studying the bog turtles habitat. Christine, thank you so much for being with us today. Can you tell us what do we need to know about this bog turtle? So bog turtles um, are pretty small. They're only about four or five inches long and they really like this kind of open boggy habitat that we're in here that has a lot of sunlight, not too many trees. They like to hang out and bask in the sun, but there's a good mix of, of mud and, and dry ground because they, they are semi-aquatic. So sometimes they like to be in the water and sometimes they'll be on land. So um, they, for part of the year during the summer from April to October, they'll be out and this is during their nesting period and this is when um, they'll lay eggs. But then for the rest of the year during the winter when it's really cold, they'll actually hibernate underneath the mud when the top freezes over. So they're only active for part of the year. But um, some of the most important parts of the habitat here are the, the vegetation that they really like and the open canopy. Now the bog turtle is a threatened species. Right. Why is it a threatened species? So there's three main things that are um, really a threat to bog turtles. One of the biggest ones is development. So lots of people like to build houses and buildings in these kind of beautiful landscapes, but unfortunately that can have negative effects on, on this kind of wetland. Obviously the bog turtles are really cute and <laughs> very charismatic and people want to take them home with them and make them pets, but this is where they're supposed to be. This is their, their like where they belong. And so taking them home is a real threat to um, their population. Absolutely, they deserve to be in their natural habitat. Now I know bog turtles are rare in this type of ecosystem. What kind of technology are you using to find them? Well, one way that we can help find them multiple times is using a GPS like this, where when we do find them in the field from doing surveys and walking around and looking for them, we can record on here exactly where we found them. And recording those kinds of points throughout this habitat, we can figure out where they most like to hang out so that we can more likely find them next time. And another really interesting way that we can help figure out where these turtles are is by attaching a little radio transmitter backpack onto them and then we can track them when we're out in the field. And Nathan Byer is a graduate student at Towson who is also looking at bog turtles for his research and he's been attaching these radio transmitter backpacks. So let's see if we could go find him and yeah, find some let's turtles. Meet Nathan. Great. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Nathan. Nice to meet you too, Chelsea. Christine said you are the bog turtle guy, and I uh, see you've got some equipment here. Can you tell us how we're going to find these bog turtles? Sure. So at this wetland, I have little bog turtles that are, have little radio, radio receiver backpacks on them that send out a constant little radio signal. This gizmo right here yeah. pretty much picks up on that constant little ping that it's sending out, and this antenna makes it a little louder so that I can find it. So you can hear in that direction, we have really strong, loud signal. In that direction, not quite as loud. Yep. And that's exactly how that works. So using this, I track right to the turtles. Well, let's find some bog turtles. Let's find some bog turtles. somewhere right in here. Now it's just a matter of actually finding her. So I think she's right here.
So what I'm going to do now is uh -huh. take off the antenna so I can try to find her a little bit closer. Oh, so that will... Oh, I see her. There she is. Oh, wow. Here's my rock drum. That's awesome. And this is the little backpack you're talking about. That's the little backpack. Okay. That it sends out a constant little sound for me to pick up. Wow. That and is She's incredible. just eight. So how do you know that? So you can see on her mouth, she's got something hanging down there. Yes. So it looks like she probably ate a slug or something like <laughs> that, which is one of their favorite animals to eat. And why are bog turtles so critical and important to the ecosystem? So bog turtles serve as a really effective sort of wetland indicator because they require what we these sorts of wetlands that are relatively low, have a lot of low vegetation like we see here. And they use that vegetation for every aspect of their life, from nesting to basking or hanging out in the sun to raise their body temperature, and pretty much every aspect. So if there are any problems with the vegetative community in bogs like this, the bog turtles are the first to pick up on that. And if we see them leaving the bogs, then we know something's wrong. So you definitely don't want to pollute wetlands like this. If you see a wetland like this, just leave it alone, because these are very sensitive. And often, just people walking through them can cause issues. Um, other than that, just things closer to home. Just try to limit, uh, eliminate runoff from your lawn. Things like insecticides, pesticides, other things like that. Because those go straight into our watersheds and straight into our box. The technology that we can use to study wildlife has become absolutely extraordinary. Thank you so much, Christine and Nathan, for being with us here today. We're looking forward to you guys recovering and delisting the bog turtle soon. We'll see you guys next time on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.